Okay, welcome back. This is Mr. Hassan's Math Channel, and I'm now answering question number two from the P3 International A Level, Pure Mathematics P3 International A Level at Excel, June 2021 paper. It says um, part A says show that one minus the cosine of two x over two sine of two x equals k tan of x where x is not equal to a multiple of 90, 90 n degrees, and n is a, n, n here is a um, element of the integer. So basically, it can't be multiples of 90, um, and where k is a constant to be found. We can really ignore this for now, because we just have to basically show that this is equal to that. So it's one of those identity questions where you have to show how this side becomes that side. Okay, so we got 1 minus cosine 2x. So we have to use some of the identities of trig identities to try to show that this becomes some constant times tan x. Okay, so we have here a double angle, and here we have a single angle. So it's got to have something to do with the double angle formula, which I found in your formula book. So for, t for the sine of 2x, one of the, well, the only formula, the only way this splits up is into 2 sine x cosine x okay this is actually not found in your formula book actually this is something that you should know okay and what is found in your formula book is a formula sine a plus b equals sine a cosine b plus um, cosine a sine b something like that right so basically if they're both the same if this is x and x sine 2x would be sine x plus x. You'll have sine x, cosine x, plus cosine x, sine x, which will give you 2 sine x, cosine x. So that's where that comes from. And there's also a double angle formula for, for cosine 2x. So cosine um, is based on the, on the formula cosine a plus b, which gives you cosine a times cosine b minus sine a times sine b. Okay, that's in your formula book. And if you replace the a and b with both x, so it's cosine 2x, you'll get cosine x times cosine x, which is cosine squared x minus sine squared x if it's cosine x plus x, cosine 2x. So we can see that cosine of 2x gives us cosine squared x minus sine squared x. And from this, you can um, derive two more formulae. We know that um, sine squared x plus cosine squared x is equal to 1. All right, we know the formula, very important and identity, that cosine squared x plus sine squared x plus cosine squared x equals 1. So I can re if I want to make this into something which has only got, say, cos um, sine squared x is in here, I can change this with 1 minus sine squared x minus another sine squared x. So I end up with 1 minus 2 sine squared x. Okay, so we know that cosine 2x is equal to 1 minus 2 sine x, uh, 2 sine squared x, sorry. That is one of the formulae that we should know. That's another one. And a third one can be derived from the same one here. I can change this into um, cosine squared x minus, so I can say that cosine 2x, if I take it from here, if I change it into just cosine squared x, this will be 1 minus cosine squared x sine squared x is 1 minus cosine squared x so that minus and minus gives you plus so you end up with cosine squared x plus cosine squared x which is 2 cosine squared x minus 1 so that's another formula that we another identity that we should know so i've actually derived these you don't i mean you should really know them and by the time you get to your exam you should know them um, that sine 2x is 2 sine, sine x cosine x. Cosine 2x can either be 1 minus 2 sine squared x, or it can be 2 cosine squared x minus 1. So we have to try to uh, use those identities to change this such that you'll end up with tan x. Now, I also know that tan x is equal to sine x divided by cosine x. This is a very important identity. This identity here, and this identity are the two basic identities that you should know from P2. And all these other identities, you know, um, other identities are based on them. So but basically those two identities here um, can be used in this case. So basically I know that tan x is sine x over cosine x. So what I'm thinking is I want to have something, so I'll end up with 
a sine x on top and cosine x underneath, then I'll get a tan x. So what I'll do is I'll change this so that it's in the form of 1 minus 2 sine squared x. Okay, so I'll have 1 minus, and then I'm going to change this into 1 minus 2 sine squared x. Why am I doing that? Because I want to end up with sine on the top. And underneath, I want to end up with cosine. Well, I have no choice for what's underneath. This is 2 times. Now, sine 2x is 2 sine x cosine x. Okay, be careful here. This is 2 times, and sine 2x itself is 2 sine x cosine x. So don't get tricked and just write 2 sine x cosine x. This is 2 times that. Okay, now, continuing from this, um, when I expand this bracket, this is minus 1 minus 1 plus 2 sine squared x over, and this is 4 sine x cosine x. Now, 1 and minus 1 cancels out, so you're left with 2 sine squared x over 4 sine x cosine x. The 2 cancels with the 4, gives you a 2 there, and one of the sine squares cancels out because this is sine squared x over sine x cosine x. So you're left here with sine x over cosine x, which is what we wanted, because we know that sine x over cosine x is equal to tan x. So this will give me a half of tan x. So here we're told uh, where k is a constant to be found, k is equal to a half. Okay, This is equal to k tan x. We found it's equal to a half tan x. So k is equal to a half. So we've proved that we get a half tan x. Okay, so we've shown how that gives you a half tan x. So we got 1 minus, let's write it out here properly, cosine 2x over 2 times sine of 2x is the same as a half times the tan of x. Okay, so we've, we've shown that identity, how that becomes that. Okay, so there's your answer to part A. And now we're going to go on to part B. Okay, part B states, hence solve for theta between 0 and 90 degrees. The equation 9 times 1 minus cosine 2 theta over 2 sine 2 theta equals 2 sec squared theta. Okay, so hence means using what we've just done before. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to take our result from before, <coughs> which is here, <coughs> and try to use this to solve this problem. So basically what I can say, if this is true here, 1 minus cosine 2 theta over 2 sine 2 theta, so I can say 1 minus cosine 2 theta over 2 sine of 2 theta <coughs> will be the same as, if I just compare it to this, a half of tan theta. Okay, just following on from what we found earlier. So I can replace this with 9 times a half tan theta. So it's 9 over 2 times tan theta is equal to 2 sec squared theta. So this is the, s the equation I have to solve. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of the fraction. So multiply both sides by 2. <coughs> so I get 9 tan theta equals... 4 sec squared theta. Now, I want to express these with the same trig ratio. So I'm going to use my identities to do so. Now, as I mentioned before, the basic identity is sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta equals 1. Now, if you've forgotten all the other identities to do with the reciprocal functions like secant and cosecant, then it's very easy for you to remember them um, in case you you know forget them and you're not, you're not sure. So I want to have an, an identity which has tan and secant in it. So what I'm going to do is I know that if I divide sine, sine theta by cosine theta, I get tan theta. So if I divide each of these by cosine squared theta, including this side as well, that will give me tan squared theta plus 1 equals secant squared theta. So what I can do here is I can replace the secant squared theta with tan squared theta plus 1. And so over here, what I'll do, I'll have 9 tan theta here 
equals 4 times. Now, instead of secant squared theta, I can replace it with tan squared theta plus 1. So I have now got an um, equation with just one trig, uh, uh, trig um, ratio in it, and I can use that, therefore, to form an equation and solve it. Okay, so I have 9 tan theta equals 4 tan squared theta plus 4. And if I bring everything on one side, I'll have 4 tan squared theta minus 9 tan theta plus 4 equals 0. It's like a quadratic equation here. I can say, for example, let, um, let's say let um, B equal tan theta. I can choose any letter. So this will be like 4B squared minus 9B plus 4 equals 0. Now, can this be factorized? Two numbers that multiply to give you 16, positive, um, and they add to give you minus 9. Uh, so 16, you have 16 and 1, you have 8 and 2, you have 4 and 4. I don't think there's any. So what we can do is you can use a quadratic formula to solve this. Okay. So we could use a quadratic formula here to solve this, or we could use... Uh, completing the square, whichever one you prefer to do. What I'll do is just to, to revise completing the square, which is an important skill. I'll use completing the square. You could also use, as I said, the quadratic formula. To complete the square for something like this, what I would do is first I would um, equate this to minus 4. Isolate the letters on one side and the constant on the other. I would divide by 4 to get rid of this 4 here. So I've got b squared minus 9 over 4b equals minus 1. And then I would complete the square for this. Okay, so this is going to be b minus. And you have a half of 9 over 4, which is 9 over 8. 9 over 8. Close the bracket squared. Minus the square of this, which is 81 over 64. Okay, this is completing the square for that. Okay, so you have, if I expanded this, I'm going to get b squared. I'm going to have minus uh, 9 over 4b. Okay, and then I'm going to have plus 81 over 64. So that's why we have to take away the 81 over 64 to give you that exactly. That's minus 1. And now I got b minus 9 over 8 squared equals basically 81 over 64 minus 1, which is like 64 over 64. All right, so 81 minus 64. So you have 81 minus 64 gives you 17. So you end up with B minus 9 over 8 squared equals 17 over 64. Now I can take the square root of both sides. So B minus 9 over 8 equals plus or minus the square root of 17 over now 64 square root is 8 okay and then i can just add 9 over 8 to both sides so b is equal to 9 over 8 plus or minus the square root of 17 over 8 so i can write this as one de whole denominator because they both have the same denominator as 8 so that's the value of b so therefore i can say that tan theta is either tan theta is 9 plus root 17 over 8 or 9 minus root 17 over 8. Okay, so that's, those are two solutions um, for tan theta. Okay, so now we've got to find the value of theta. Um, so we know that tan theta equals this value and tan theta equals that value. So we're going to find the solutions. And remember, our value of theta is between 0 and 90 degrees. Okay, the value of theta is between 0 degrees and 90 degrees. Okay, so only in that first quadrant is what we're looking for, the value of theta. So let's take the first one. Theta is equal to inverse tan of, of, of all of this. So let's put this in our calculator. So we have inverse, make sure we're in, in degree mode, which we are, inverse tan of 9 plus root 17 divided by 8. And that gives us 58.633, 58.633, okay? And also for this one, we have the same thing, except we have a, a minus root 17. So let's go back to here, change that to a minus, and that should give us 
31.366 it continues on like that so i'm just like dot 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 and we have to give our answer now there's only going to be these two solutions because for tan the other solutions will be in these two quadrants there there these were the other two quadrants where tan will be positive i think this is going to be positive because root 17 is less than nine so that's going to be positive and that's both so they're both going to be in this quadrant here both of these answers are in this quadrant as we can see and so the other solutions will be if you add 180 to them or take away 180 from them, that will be when uh, theta is either less than uh, 0 or more than 90. So these are the only solutions. So we have to just now write them to one decimal place. So you have 58.6 degrees and you have 31.4 degrees. So these are the solutions for this problem here. And we're done. So other questions from this particular um, paper can be... Uh, P3 of June 2021 can be found by clicking on this link. Other questions from trig identities and equations of P3 by clicking on this link. You can subscribe to my channel by clicking over here. At the top of the page, there'll be a card taking you to another P3 paper you might want to watch. And in the description, you'll find links to my other P papers and topic wise and exam paper wise <coughs> from my Edexcel International A levels like P1, P2, P4, S1, M1. Also, my IGCSE, Cambridge IGCSE International, <coughs> sorry, Cambridge IGCSE um, questions as well. Thank you for watching and see you soon.